When I look back 25 years, I do remember a great optimism at that time. People living in Russia and the other former Soviet territories felt that a very different future was in front of them. The quarter century started on a, a note of high hope because of a wave of democratization. But what's replaced that autocracy is often pretty dysfunctional democratic politics. Within a year after the fall of the Berlin Wall, it was clear that the end of international Soviet communism was going to produce a revival of religious politics, of ethnic and nationalist and separatist politics. I remember uh, the night the Berlin Wall fell, or the morning after, I was, I was actually in Rio. The headline was, O Triomphe do Capitalismo, the triumph of capitalism. And as I was reading this, I felt a, a tug at my coat. I looked down and this four-year-old child was begging for the scraps of my breakfast. So I thought, well, you know, maybe the triumph of capitalism isn't completely finished yet. The income gap is widening. Corporate uh, chief executives are, are paid, you know, a hundred or a couple hundred times as much as their lowest paid employees. Thanks to the internet, thanks to sort of global commerce, migration flows of people, we're in a much more global world. It really is astonishing the amount of shifts that are going on at the moment. It's almost a principle of network mathematics that when you build a system of globalization like the one we're building with computers and speed, you're going to get volatility. And we see it in the financial markets and we see it in the rise of groups like ISIS uh, overnight. Both the good and the bad are at a greater amplitude. In that sense, what I think technology does to human history is it turns up the volume. The cost of protest has fallen a lot. If somebody's there with a cell phone and can take a picture of it, it often can reach a huge audience in a very short space of time. Technology makes it possible to self-empower. Technology also gives repressive governments tools to monitor their citizens' behavior. Hardware and software, it seems to me now they're sort of overlapping. The knowledge that your communication system is being monitored by the state. And what does this do to your thinking year after year? Information in the modern age is one of the major sources of state strength. It's the question of our age, who wins the authoritarian adaptation and control of these uh, technologies or the citizens that thought they would be empowered in a completely new way. I can't see the future. What I see is struggles. Some will be won, some will be lost. We need to think 100 years from now, what are people looking back at us going to judge us for? Thank you to the Gelber Committee because um, the Gelber Committee was the first prize award that, uh, that the bottom billion won. It's since won quite a lot, but you started it. <laughs> <laughs>